The other way to control the exposure of your image is by limiting how much light is allowed to enter the lens. This is done by adjusting a setting called the iris, or the aperture. And aperture settings are measured using a term called f-stops, or sometimes t-stops. And just to keep you on your toes, f-stops are a whole other set of numbers for you to keep track of. And best of all, they're inverted and logarithmic. So this means an f-stop of 22 means the iris is closed to a pinhole, only letting in a tiny bit of light. f-16 lets in twice as much light, f-11 a little bit more, f-8, f-5.6, 4, 2, 8. And if the camera is set to f-2, the aperture is wide open and the lens is letting in as much light as possible. Although some lenses can go even wider to 1.4 and others are limited to like f4 or 5.6, so they don't let it quite as much light in. And look, I know this seems like a random series of numbers, and you think that the bigger the number, the bigger the aperture, but it doesn't work that way. Now, sometimes I swear, I think they made all this stuff so complicated just to ensure job security for camera crews. Anyway, it's not really important that you memorize the numbers, but it is important that you understand the concept. You can restrict the amount of light coming into the camera to control the resulting exposure of your image. Changing the f-stop won't affect the graininess of the image either. So most of the time you set your camera to a fixed ASA setting and then you adjust the f-stop as necessary to make sure that all the shots are properly exposed. Now if you're in a situation where the light is very bright and you stop the lens down all the way to f22 or whatever its minimum f-stop is and the image is still too bright, you can add a filter in front of the lens to further reduce the light. These filters we call them ND filters or neutral density filters which is a fancy way of saying they have neutral color. They're pure gray. And wait for it, they have their own numbering system too. An ND3 filter is equivalent to one f-stop. So if your lens was set to f8 and you add an ND3, that would be the same as making your lens set to f11. ND6 is equivalent to two f-stops. ND9 is equivalent to three f-stops. I know, total madness. But again, the names and numbers aren't important. What's important is that you understand that you have options to limit how much light is coming into your camera lens. And that way you can make the image properly exposed no matter the circumstance. Besides, if you hold up an ND9 to your eye, you can see that it's a whole lot darker than an ND3. So it's pretty intuitive that it's going to make your picture darker if you slap it on your lens. Many professional cameras have ND filters built right into the camera too. So you can reduce the light without having to add a piece of glass in front of the lens. Just flick a switch and voila. Law. By the way, some of you who may be familiar with still photography may be wondering about using shutter speed to affect the exposure. Since when shooting stills, we typically balance f-stop and shutter speed to find the optimal settings. But with video, you can't really adjust your shutter speed. The cameras can adjust it, but you shouldn't use that as a way to control the amount of light coming in. Because see, in video, the shutter speed should pretty much always be set to twice that of the frame rate. So for example, if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, your shutter speed should be set to 140. And if you lower the shutter speed significantly below that, the images are going to appear smeary and stuttery, which is a cool special effect, but not applicable for most normal scenes. Likewise, if you go higher, the images become unnaturally sharp, which again is an interesting special effect, and we use it sometimes for sports videography, or it's been used in feature films in battle scenes. But again, this should be thought of as a special effect and not as a way to limit the amount of light coming into the lens.